A thousand pounds is a lot of money. There's no two ways around that, but it does kind of depend on context. See, a thousand pounds for a car? Yeah, makes sense. A thousand pounds for a house? God, yes, please. But a thousand pounds for a phone? Well, that's a bit much. A thousand pounds for a Xbox themed cake? Yeah, definitely. And a thousand pounds for a monitor, or I guess maybe is this a TV? Either way, it would normally be a lot, except this is no ordinary monitor. This is the Philips Momentum 55. It is a 4K 120Hz 55 inch monitor TV with a really nice included soundbar. Are you interested? Well, I definitely am, so we're gonna take a look at it in this video, so stick around. But first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing all the way over there with the subscribe button and the bell notification icon for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. The Philips Momentum line of monitors started a couple years ago with a 43-inch model that was basically targeting console gamers. They've now stepped it up, though, to this 55-inch model, which, like I said, runs at 4K 120Hz. Especially for the next generation of consoles that are coming out shortly, this could be an amazing experience for that. And it even comes with a Bowers & Wilkins uh, soundbar pre-attached, which, well, can't, you know, hold a candle to uh, dedicated audio setups, especially surround. It's much better than most built-in TV speakers. The display itself is a VA panel, which isn't the fastest in the world, something we will cover in just a second, but it is an HDR1000 panel, meaning a peak brightness of over a thousand nits, and covers 100% of the sRGB spectrum and comes factory calibrated out of the box with a Delta E of less than two. As far as console gaming displays go, the Momentum's main competition is 4K TVs. There are a lot of them that are out for three, four, five, six hundred pounds, but none of them are quite as impressive as this. Unless you can find the elusive TCL model that isn't available in the UK, to get a panel that matches the specs of this, essentially 4K 120Hz, you will need to be spending £1,500 or more to get a Samsung or LG one, which weirdly makes this £1,000 monitor seem like a bit of a decent value. Now, like I said, there is a downside. It's VA panel. It is not the fastest in the world. I measured its black to white response time at around eight milliseconds, which while not the slowest I've seen, does mean that it does have a fair bit of ghosting. As you can see from the UFO test, you can see that there's multiple copies of the UFO across every frame, which does mean that even in faster paced games, you can notice it a little bit. It wasn't overly off-putting, and especially if you're sitting far enough back and playing with a, you know, Corsair Lapdog type mouse and keyboard, you really don't notice it, and I think if you're gaming with a console, it would be even less noticeable, especially since controller inputs aren't quite as fast and jerky as a mouse and keyboard can be. Input lag is also something that people who are buying these types of displays worry a fair bit about, but worry not, at least with this one, because it only has four milliseconds of input lag up at the top of the display. Now that is at 1080p 60fps as opposed to 4K 120 as that's the maximum my uh, time sleuth can go. So I also measure the total system input lag, uh, which is from a LED on a mouse going out when you left click to a gun firing on screen in game. And that was around about 30 to 33 milliseconds, which puts it squarely in the, not the fastest I've ever tested, but certainly not terrible category. Great name, I know. But of course, it's not all about gaming. Odds are, if you have a 55 inch monitor or TV, it's probably gonna be replacing your main living room display. And so it has to be able to perform those more living room duties as well. And this does an amazing job. Watching films or TV on this, even watching the F1, is a really, really nice experience. Uh, the picture is obviously crisp, it's 4K at 55 inches, what else can you expect? It's plenty bright, the colours are beautiful, and like I said, the included soundbar, well, again, could be outperformed by uh, a full room setup or something, a dedicated uh, system. It's certainly better than most built-in TV speakers I've heard. As for the rest of its features, there is one fairly unique one that's unique to the Philips Momentum line. They call it Ambiglow. Essentially, it's a string of incredibly bright RGB LEDs along the back sides of the monitor that you can set to a number of different settings. 
The main one that you would probably turn on is follow video, which basically works out what's on the screen and then tries to average those colors and throw them up on the wall around the monitor uh, so that you get a bit more of a, an immersive experience. It extends your, your vision effectively, uh, which can be really nice, except it's a little slow and so can be a bit jarring to, to see one color on the screen and a completely different color on the wall for half a second or a second and then updates to, to match. So if you're watching fast paced content, it might not be quite as enjoyable, but leaving it on, especially for just things like the windows backgrounds, it is quite a nice look. There are a few other modes, including auto, which is basically just color cycling. Although that does seem to have a bug where it flashes white at the end of its cycle. I'm sure there'll be a firmware update soon. And you can also set it to a static color as well, including just white if you really want to. And of course, inputs wise, you have a decent selection of three HDMI ports and one display port, as well as a USB 3 hub with two yellow charging ports, which means basically as long as you have power connected to the display, it doesn't have to be turned on, it will always charge devices that are connected to it. Definitely a nice feature. As for the stand, it does have some tilt support built in, which is nice, or you can vase mount it if you prefer. So it sounds like an amazing display, a pretty reasonable price point for the features and specs that it's offering, right? Well, yes, but there is a catch. Those three HDMI ports are all HDMI 2. That means the only way you can run 4K at 120Hz is over DisplayPort, something that the new generation of consoles don't have. Now there may be adapters or cables you could use to convert HDMI 2.1 on the consoles to DisplayPort 1.3 or 1.4 for the monitor, but out of the box and for the immediate future, that's not going to work, and that's a pretty big downside for anyone who's looking for the, the ultimate console gaming display. If you're using this with a PC, you have no worries beyond the ghosting, and so this is a great option if you want to have a 4K 120Hz 55-inch you know, TV monitor, included soundbar, all for around about £1,000. Great choice, definitely recommend it, but if you're after it for console gaming, it's not quite as good as you would hope. Now with that said, pricing can vary, so check out the link in the description down below to see pricing when and where you watch this. That'll be an Amazon affiliate link that will take you to your local Amazon store where you can see all that good stuff. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. I would love to hear your thoughts on the Philips Momentum 55 in the comments down below. Is this a display that you would want yourself? Would you replace your main TV with it? Or would you go with uh, a more standard Samsung or LG, you know, 4K 120Hz TV, spend a bit more? Let me know in those comments down below. There will also be a whole load of other links in the description you can check out from things like Overclock UK affiliate links, VPN options, merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one, or a load of other cool designs, Patreon, and just a whole load of stuff, so feel free to check it out. I will leave some more videos over on the end cards, although I don't have anything directly related to this, so maybe I'll just throw up some uh, the monitor reviews playlist and you can check that one out. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. If you've got any questions, do feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And thanks for watching. We'll see you all in the next video.